did. We're along the car number 19 in the museum. It's one of several heavyweight coaches in our collection. It has a very interesting history and it has history inside its history. I think you need to come on board to explain. This car is historic and it also carries history as its main cargo. This is what we call a gallery car in the museum. We use it to display history inside the car, which is historic. In this case, it's the history of the DM&IR, the Duluth Masabi and Iron Range Railway, and its two predecessor railroads, the Duluth Masabi and Northern and the Duluth and Iron Range. Frank King was the historian for the DM&IR. He wrote the book on the history of the railroad, also a nice book on logging railroads in northern Minnesota, but Frank was the quintessential expert on all things leading up to the DM&IR. And from his book, they put together this gallery car displaying the history of the DM&IR, right from the founding fathers of each of the railroads, right through its evolution into one of the major iron range haulers of iron ore anywhere in the world, and its eventual acquisition by the Canadian National Railway, which operates the trackage today. This is history within a historic car. The car itself was built in 1890 by the Barney and Smith Company, and it was a 62 passenger coach. And it served quite well. It was originally bought by the Duluth and Iron Range, as I said, one of the two predecessors to the DM&IR, which is now the CN. It was a heavyweight car, one of several in our collection. But this one has a particularly interesting story. Imagine this as its own vehicle, self-propelled. That's a story. That interesting story has to do with railroads and how they like to experiment. And the Duluth, Basami, and Iron Range was no different. They had seen the success of self-powered cars like the McKean Motor Car, shown here on the Northern Pacific Railway in Carleton, Minnesota. It was a gas-powered vehicle that was like its own bus. And the DM&IR thought they'd get into that too. Even though they stopped making the McKean Motor Car in 1917, DM&IR was willing to give the concept a shot. And in 1926, they took this car, number 19, and converted it to a gas-powered, self-propelled vehicle and used it to shuttle passengers from Allen Junction across Minnesota's glorious Iron Range all the way to Virginia. It was a abysmal failure. <laughs> it didn't work. It was unreliable. And within a very short time, they decided, we'll just convert it back to a coach. And that's what they did. And it served out much of its life as a 62-seat passenger coach. Later, it became a sleeper car for the work crews. That meant it got a W in front of the number and became W804 before being donated to the museum. Interesting about the DM&IR, though, and their interest in self-propelled total vehicles. They had what was known as the Jitney. And the Jitney ran in the Proctor Yards from downtown Proctor, where the main roundhouse and warehouses were, all the way out to the new roundhouse, which was far on the other end of the yard. And they got an old Duluth trolley and they converted it to a diesel-powered, self-propelled vehicle and ran the workers back and forth in kind of trolley service style with an old Duluth trolley, and they did that for many years. That worked actually a lot better than when car 19 was its own self-propelled vehicle. A quick look at history inside a historic train car. An interesting story to say the least. Thank you for listening to all of our stories. More importantly, thank you for sharing them with everyone. That is so important. If you shared it with two people today, four people tomorrow, and eight later on, we thank you very much. Also, thank you for doing what we've always been telling you, and so is everyone else. You've got to stay home if you're sick. You also have to cover your coughs and don't touch your face. Keep that social distancing, and let's take care of each other.